during Hello, I'm Rogue Link, and this is commentary yeah, over my PB uh, of Shantae and the Pirate's Curse, then. Pirate Mode, No Out of Bounds, All Dark so Magic. Hear, uh, in the All Dark Magic category, we're going to be collecting all of the Dark edition. Magic. Uh, this involves killing creatures yeah, called like Cackle Bats, and in collecting all the Dark Magic, we and get all of... We get the up, uh, true ending of the video game. Like pirate mode ago. means that we have all of the pirate items at the start of the game, such as the dash scene here. Usually you'd have to go through the entire game and unlock these abilities lately, one by one, but in pirate yes. mode, which is kind of a new game uh, plus really mode, we're to able to use items. all of these special items right away, such as dashing, double jumping with the cannon, floating with like the cape, or ground I'll attacks with a, with a sword, as well as a gun, level. which you use in order to unlock switches in hidden places. And not have to use the this game plan. also has a series of out-of-bounds glitches, which we won't be using in this category. Um, I might have played during Invasion. I honestly don't remember. So as you can see, right out of the uh, gate, we're able to take advantage the of the set. New Game Plus Pirate Mode uh, mechanics. We're using a pike ball here in order to blow up these mines that are on either side of these bridges. Usually you would have to wait for the enemies to blow them up, but using the sword and the pike ball we're able to break them right away. Here we're jumping over a cutscene trigger in order to skip a cutscene, and we're going to try to kill this boss, or kill that enemy, and get the monies stored within it. The first boss coming right up is Pirate Master. Pirate Master is a pretty RNG heavy boss. He has two types of attacks. He can either shoot cannonballs at you, or he can oh, charge at you. Ideally, you want to get a red cannonball, as seen there, so that you can reflect it back at him. You need to reflect three red cannonballs back at him. Two of them will stun him, allowing you to deal damage to him, and the third one will trigger the end of the fight. Really no dashes good. here, so pretty good actually. luck for this run. Like, I wish now we're going I through a little bit of plot, setting up the, the game here. Uh, Shate accidentally attacked the new owner of the town, the so she's getting a good. court summons here, and they're threatening to cut off her cool. hair, which, as you can see, is kind of important to her character and her ability to attack. So, as you can see, she's distressing about this. This takes so place cool. after Risky's Revenge, where she lost all of her magic. So, she's going to be, you know, complaining and unable to do any of the magic that she'd be able to use if I knew now what I knew in then, previous I games. In other Shantae games, you would unlock the ability to transform <laughs> into different animals, but since you don't have your powers in this game, the different movement techniques and everything oh, yeah, are the pirate it. items that I described earlier, which these yeah, pirate items so are actually owned by Risky Boots here, who's a recurring villain of the Shantae series. So this is our first Cackle Bat. Yeah, In any I percent, this is the only Cackle Bat that you're forced to collect. Uh, you're always like, going to have at least one of the 20 Cackle Bats. Powerful. And each of the fights against a Cackle Bat is going to be very similar to this one with how they jump around and how they move. A lot of the differences between the, the different Cackle Bat fights is the areas the that they're set, like set up in and whether or not you can dash. Uh, here we're getting the magic lamp, which is, which is very important. It's not only used for collecting the dark magic, but it can be used for bringing any item that's not dropped in a bag closer to you. So things like coins and hearts, you're able to pull in close from very far away. Uh, we need two things in order to leave this town. We need a library card, which we get from Sky here, who's another recurring Shantae character. But we also need to save. I'm thinking uh, way forward, wanted to make sure you had some sort of save file so you didn't lose absolutely everything. So they usually ask you to save before you can leave. And we're going to talk to the guard and do something called the Risky Shuffle. The Risky Shuffle, in order to do the Risky Shuffle, you need a controller that can have two different kinds of inputs, an like an analog stick and a d-pad. <laughs> and you rotate between the two of them in order to shift back and forth frame perfectly, allowing us to dash 
over very short distances instead of needing the very long charge up that the game usually requires. Uh, what's BFM? We're also charging through all these enemies in order to get uh, money and have the potential drops. Oh, is that the one? Uh, here, there's a couple things we're going to pick no, up. The, um, we need to really, pick really up three oh, flesh no, pops, the, the which we're charge, able right? to the kill these charge. enemies multiple times by oh, sort of resetting nice. everything and bouncing off of the ceiling. This big fuzzy monster, the one we're also going to be getting another cackle bat here. Uh, back to the, the resetting. How the pogo works is every time you touch the ceiling, it kind of resets your attack. So we're actually able to kill the enemy multiple times. Okay, yep. Uh, we're also leaving the room to the, uh, pick up before we pick up the dark magic because it's faster than mechanic. waiting for the death animation. It was actually really, really cool. Uh, using uh, the gun Where that we would like usually get later in order to together. sequence break here a little bit and get this brochure, which is actually needed in order to unlock the uh, second level, really as opposed to like needing it now. But since this is pirate mode, and we have I all think. of the pirate items right out of the gate, um, we're able to do a lot of it. things that we would so usually have to back creature, out, back right. track yeah, for cat -cat. right away. <laughs> cat -cat and in this case, we're going to be getting the squid oil, which um, will become more relevant the uh, much the right. later. So using the gate key that we got from handing in the flesh pops, the we're going to head to the library, which is why we need the library card in the first the left, first place, first and pick up the and forbidden the map. For now maps are the like main progression across the or, uh, uh, overworld, which um, is a series of islands that you sort of scroll between. Each island, the each dungeon, really unlocks a new map, which allows you to see a new island, which allows you to you go to that damage, island. Something Fairly happens. straightforward. Uh, here, we're actually going to ignore uh, the imps. We're going to jump around them, because we don't have a way to kill them coming from this direction. Uh, we're also going to jump up in the air in order to get a cackle bat up so here. I, Unfortunately, I we dash, weren't able to maintain our dash for some extra 15 damage against this cackle bat, so but we still had a pretty good fight. Um, and then Cat was Again, leaving and re-entering the room because it's faster and it, than oh, that's right, it was staying in the so room and waiting for the cackle bat to despawn naturally. So it was... It effectively became, every time you take damage, heal an amount. Uh, one last chance charging through. So you only want to kill damage. enemies dashing through uh, them that are absolutely necessary. In this case, we want to kill the Scarecrows because they have a chance of dropping very useful items. Uh, the reason why you want to avoid... Oh, nice little glitch there that I really like doing. Um, the reason why you don't want to kill things as much as possible is because every time you hit something, it has a little bit of delay. A bit of hidden hundred monies there. And there was another... If you return the library card, you're able to, to get that hundred monies, and we use that in order to buy three while. pirate flares and, and a super pike ball. The, uh, the pirate flares are useful for warping back to your ship instead of backtracking while, through so the entire shoot, island. So we're going to be using that most of the time. And the super there pike ball is going to be very important for the like second boss. Hydra, I think? And it basically just looks like a bunch of eels. The first island is a bunch Saliva of eels Island. Jammed together in a single collar. Again, doing a bit of risky shuffle here. You almost always want to start the levels off with a dash. Uh, most of the enemies I kill also have a chance of dropping something very useful. Uh, here, there's an invisible platform, and we're going to open up that switch for something that will become okay. important later while we're coming back through this level. Yeah, unhinged looks really good. Again, this is going to be a little bit of sequence breaking. Uh, since we have the cannon already, which the cannon is usually the last item you pick up, it allows you to jump three times in the air. We're going to use that in order to go up this middle path. The middle path is usually intended for you to drop down after you've gone through the whole stage and done everything. You're intended to use that path in order to have a shortcut back to where you're supposed to go. But instead, since we have all of this jumping capability now, we use the cannon to just go straight up the shortcut backwards and 
skip a decent chunk of content. All without going out of bounds or anything. Uh, here's an interesting little glitch. If you pause three times while it says, you gave hamstink, it actually skips a sort of blinking animation. Yeah, I really want to play magic. And is Maybe one of the single biggest time is, saves uh, in the game. Uh, heading to the right here to pick up the uh, last cackle bat of this I'll stage. Play, uh, magic, and then it just proceeds uh, like, uh, as normal. Something. Once again, leaving and re-entering the room so that we remove the damage animation. Bat in the middle of Mugfog Island are probably the worst to deal with. Yeah, that one's also pretty bad. And now we use the shortcut for its intended purpose and drop all the way back down. Now. Uh, the reason oh, we need to do that is these two girls on spring fall. break wanted us to turn uh, the fountain back really on. Only in Commander, though. And in doing so, they unlock the Petrify spell. Now we kind of skipped like the person who asks us to find the Petrify Commander, spell in the first place, it'll but it'll be long. really obvious since we need to talk to them again for a progression anyway. Though I have heard Usually they give us an item that unlocks these statues in this area and allows us to ascend with them. But since and we have the cannon, we don't need that item, and we can just grab the Petrify spell and then is, uh, go talk to them again. Uh, boost all the, he the, wants the, to use the Petrify spell in ones. order to free his to wife, but unfortunately it backfires, way. turning um, him to stone. But that unlocks the first level for us. Unglued, I think? It was either the first or second one. And it's the all of your... All of your Whoopsie. Art, all of your cards with art <laughs> so here we're actually setting up for something, something like significantly that. later and in the like run. Uh, the, we're charging the through to this little hidden area that with the intent every of picking up two keys. Has this, has the art Fortunately the getting a right. bubble shield there, which so will be very useful later. And now, keys can be used in any area in any dungeon. So just because you get a key here doesn't mean you have to use it in this area. So we're going to be picking up two keys in this little hidden area that will and that will allow us to have two extra keys in a much later dungeon. Yeah, and also picking up like... some extra money here. Doing another risky shuffle, getting a dash that we're not supposed to have. Breaking some more pots well, and getting that second the new key. One. So it definitely wasn't the new one. Um, now we just need to hurl ourselves into the water, which is going to death warp us back to the start of the area. So now we can do the level proper. I just can't remember what the third set is called. It's Hoping for some extra drops from those snakes. Unfortunately, unstable. didn't get any. Oh no! Unstable. Here, since we usually you'd need to drop down unstable. here to get a key, but since we already have two. We just head right across yeah, and use the a key. One was unstable. My bad. There are some level keys that we're going to need to pick up in order to have these two extra keys later on. But for now, we can just use that extra key and take advantage of the fact that we already have them. Pretty simple jumps uh, across this room. Now, this room's kind of interesting. So we start off with a lot of hits on that first lobster, but we immediately switch to the sword. That's, uh, that's not, because we're that's doing 8 damage works. to the both of them, as opposed to the cannon, which is just 5 to 1 of them. So the overall so if DPS is actually to, higher to if you that. use the sword in that section. Basically just say, nope, these Picking are up some more cash, cards, heading through this matters. room. It's not the set, it's the and then board. starting the first boss. So like unsets are banned. Uh, this boss is also kind of similar to the, the snakes, though we only end up killing it once. But the lands uh, we're going to be pogoing off the ceiling with the sword and doing damage very, very, very fast. Yeah, the, the unlands were actually Here I'm setting up in a very, very the, uh, specific position in order to bounce land. against the ceiling the and getting a ton of damage against this eye. I unfortunately missed the eye for one of those cycles, but we didn't get hit, so we're still able to complete this fairly quickly. Yeah, we're losing time. Are they losing it a little bit of time to that mistake, unfortunately. But the first boss is dead, and as I said before, that's going to wow, that's such uh, a 
give us a nice little health restore, a little, little celebration jingle, and we get the map to the next island. The Spiderweb Island map. Now, usually we would use a Pirate Flare here, but to save money, we actually risky shuffle back here, making sure to jump over that Heart Squid. We're able to run through that path because of the switch that we hit earlier, and we head the back to ship. Uh, the reason why we do that here is because it costs yeah, a minimum of really 15 seconds in order to do a shopping trip. And, uh, so the extra Pirate Flare like there's one costs a minimum of 15 seconds, and since like it scribbled out doesn't take much like more than 15 time. seconds in order to get back to the ship, it really kind of balances itself out. Again, opening with a risky shuffle and making sure not to run to that first wall. And then just dashing across. Uh, here, there's some randomly spawning ghosts, so you just need to be really careful while going up. Just barely squeezing between the two of them there. And here we're going to be picking up a fossil with the sword power-up. This is actually something that we're going to need much later in the game for one of the last dungeons. But again, since we have all the power-ups, we're able to pick it up now instead of coming back. Once again, opening with a risky shuffle to get through this room. And the next section is called Run Run Roddy Tops. Uh, it's a kind of different style from the rest of the game. Where our objective is to carry Roddy Tops here all the way to the end. Unlike the rest of the game, anything that touches you is an instant kill. But, also unlike the rest of the game, instead of going back to your previous checkpoint, you just go to the start of that room. So it's a lot of varied obstacles, a lot of varied instant kill obstacles. Uh, here we want to charge through that first tongue guy because it's actually faster to die a couple times and keep charging through than it is to wait. From the ground up to be a trap Here you can see the Apparently, tongue skip, which options. if you stop, Either focus I on think it's frame perfect. If it's not frame perfect, it's close to frame perfect. Uh, you're actually able to Amanda's slide down the rat, between the rock face and the tongue and not actually get hit. Uh, these are just some fairly simple crushers. As long as you don't run into them while they're still down, it's hard to lose time in these areas. They make a lot of noise, but they're generally not too dangerous. Getting through here, a bit of a quieter section, which is nice, because most of Run Run Roddy Tops is actually fairly, fairly crazy. It's one of those sections which is not too bad to go through slowly or do it casually, but as soon as you start trying to go fast, it's crazy just how much starts pushing back at you. Uh, this section is filled with tombstones. So pretty. only certain tombstones can come to life, but when they come to life, and even if they come to life, is random. So you'll see me jumping over tombstones that either pop up late or don't pop up at all, and that's due to the fact that there's a chance that those could uh, appear. You can go for riskier jumps that yeah, sort of I jump late in order to cards. land on other platforms, but it's uh, generally the, not worth it. The uh, these robots right are also the fairly straightforward. Um, they, so as soon as you get in front of them, they charge at you, drafts, so but in it. the end they're not actually that, too bad uh, since you run uh, just a later. little bit faster than them. They um, certainly have an uh, imposing sense of danger really, though, like but rapping. since they only move so Nowadays, fast, it's, really care too much about uh, the they're cards. certainly worse things. Uh, here I'm trying to jump early in order to save a few frames and not smear against the wall. Why I, think uh, I mostly got the, it, but again you saw me hit the wall a little bit. For me to draft, and I can, like, uh, some tombstones, constructed deck again like just things. jumping over them, pretty straightforward. Uh, now things start getting a little crazy with the robots, but again, nothing we can't handle. 
Uh, these enemies are very interesting. Not only do they shoot a projectile that goes forever until they hit a wall or something, but they also rise up at random heights. So it's a lot of on-the-fly thinking when going through this section. Uh, we'd want that those three green pillars to be up so that we could charge through and save a little bit of time, but unfortunately they were closed. Right, we're through. And here's the last section. We're going to be seeing absolutely everything from all of Run Run Roddy Tops thrown together in one fairly long section. Uh, you can't really hear it here because of the commentary, but on stream I'm actually counting to three in order to move past the tongues at the soonest possible mo moment to skip some of those crusher cycles. Some really tight jumps to finish, and that's it for Run Run Roddy Tops. Making sure to avoid the cackle bats. Don't worry, we'll be coming back for it later. And then just handing in Roddy Tops. Actually, an interesting point of the story here. Uh, we actually find out that Roddy Tops is fine, and she was just messing with Shantae the whole time. Uh, we find out that their brother actually has a carriage that he can take us in order to go through the forest. And usually you would need to go back to the first area, find the squid oil, um, and then talk to him again. But since we already have the squid oil... Uh, we're able to just computer, stay here and not actually have to go anywhere. Is, is gonna be and that's going to take us back over to the right for that first section. And he's going to give us the shriveled thing, which is the item that we need in order to get into the next level. But before we head into the next level, we actually need to grab a couple cackle bats. Doing a little bit of risky shuffle to get through here. And we're going to do an interesting yep. trick here called a delayed dash. So some rooms have an invisible wall in them that prevents you yeah, from magic. starting a dash through them. But if you get the highlight and then start the dash in the next room, you're able sure to start the dash in the next room instead of the previous room, thus avoiding the wall and being able to go through. Uh, here we're using the shriveled thing in order to open up the door. And we're not picking up that cackle bat similar to leaving the room uh, to prevent the despawn animation. We just need to grab it on our way back. Again, opening up with some more risky shuffles. Nice. Heading through here. Uh, each of these Ooh, can drop a pike ball or a super pike ball. The super pike ball being a major resource that we need for later boss fights, and the pike ball being a resource that we need uh, for a fight in this room to get a key. A lot of this game is figuring out ways to get major resources, such as the pike, super pike balls and super monster milks, and figuring out the money routing for if you happen to not have everything, which is very likely, how much money do you need in order to proceed. The reason why we actually get this specific key is because that succubus enemy has a chance of dropping both a super monster milk and a super pike ball, which are both very, very important for later bosses. Here we're using the cannon to once again sequence break up through here to grab those uh, enemies that'll launch us up. And that kind of makes up for the key that we used in the first area. And then we get this key, Pretty good stage so far. which we're going to that use kind of on a locked though. door momentarily. Uh, the rest of this has been going pretty well. So once using this key, we still have two keys left over. Using the cannon in order to skip this section a little bit. So the item that you get in this area is the cape, and there's a, or the, the hat. And there's a lot of sections with upward gusts that you're supposed to use in order to lift up with your hat. But since the cannon's faster, we use those instead. Uh, here we're going to be using the Super Pike Ball. Very, very effective against this boss. Uh, 
and uh, it's only costs 40, so it's really easy to grab one on our first shopping trip. Uh, there's also a little trick that you noticed right there where if you get hit a very particular way, you're able to prevent Shantae from moving. Usually you would get knocked really, really far away. A lot of this fight is making sure you stay within pike ball range, which is also attack range. And then if you happen to get the damage boost where you stay still getting a free 15 damage in with your cannon. So all in all, a fairly solid fight. Yeah, definitely pretty promising splits. Not quite gold, but still pretty good. Probably would have been gold if I had a better fight against the... And of the course, as with all of the levels, we get another map. And in this case, it is to Tan Line Island. Now, first we have to remember to use the lamp to get that miss. dark magic. And now we're going to see our first use of pirate flares. Uh, it's actually an undocumented feature, but you can mash the bumpers in order to use an item that you have selected from your inventory. And that's why once I selected the pike ball, we switched over in the inventory to the pirate flare, which will allow us to warp out immediately. Starting off with a shuffle, of course, and we really want to kill these cactuses because they drop two things that are very important. One's a monster milk, which you saw there, which we want to use on the bosses. And another is a bubble shield, which we're going to be using on the second to last boss and the last boss. Runs fairly solid. Had a couple runs that died pretty quick, but this So next up, we're going to be getting the X-Ray Specs from Squid Baron here. Uh, we're going to use this for a bit of a fetch quest. Um, you're supposed to find out about the fetch quest by going back to town, but as long as you have the x-ray specs, you're able to complete the quest. In order to do that, we're going to head to Saliva Island. Of course, starting off with a shuffle. And then heading through, again, since we hit that switch, we're able to jump through there and use the cannons here. Okay, not bad. With very precise canning, we're actually able to make it up here without standing on any platform whatsoever. And we're going to grab a little bit of money here. So in order to proceed, we need to get uh, 255 monies. Almost. Uh, that's going to be used for a couple things. One, we're going to restock on our pirate flares because we're actually about to use the last one here very shortly. Uh, two, we're going to be buying a super monster mill in order to more quickly kill the next boss. And three, we're going to be getting two attack upgrades, a shampoo and a conditioner. The shampoo increases your attack damage and the conditioner increases your attack speed. Uh, generally, the conditioner increases your DPS more, but in order to beat cycles on the final boss, we are going to need both. Now here we use the x-ray specs. We used the x-ray specs in order to get a mummy sketch. Uh, there's three of these mummy sketches. One in Saliva Island, one on Tanline Island, and one in Scuttletown. The one in Scuttletown you're supposed to find first, but again, since we already know the routing and where everything is, we just get them in an order that slightly optimizes our overworld movement. Also, Rip Joe. Uh, he will come into play later. <laughs> what did I tell you about murdering my boyfriend? We're getting our second mummy Generally sketch proud. and going through that shopping trip that I described earlier. So once again, we're now at zero pirate flares, so we're going to buy a set of three, buy a super monster milk, shampoo, and condition. Alright, next up, so back I to Tanline Island to get the last sarcophagus, but we're also going to pick up 
Um, one more thing for a long-term fetch quest. Okay, we're good for the next two bosses. That's fantastic. Oh no! So again, pirate mode. We're able to dash over that rapidly falling platform early to get this enchanted sword. We actually need this enchanted sword to get to the very last level during one of the longer fetch quests, quests of the game. Hoping for some super pike ball drops yeah, from all these skeletons, but we don't get too many. And, we're just following me super fast. and here we get the third mummy before. sketch. Uh, once we have all three, we're able to get a random combination that opens up the desert palace. You can't just memorize a simple combination of three, so you need to be very careful to remember that simple combination in order to use it on the padlock, so to speak, uh, right here. I'm actually Noctorious in, in my chat for forgetting the three-digit combination, so you'll usually hear me chanting the combination in this 30 seconds of, of time. So now we're heading into Tanline Temple or Desert Palace, as I like to call it. And they mistake you for their princess, so they seal you up in your room for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why. But this introduces a small stealth section. If any of these big red guards see you, they send you back to your room. There's actually a way to do all of the rooms in one cycle. Uh, this one is almost frame and pixel perfect, so I don't go for it. But uh, this room is actually not too bad. You just wait a little bit and then jump very quickly up the chains. And you're able to make it through before they turn back around. Right here we're opening up the key. Which is going to put our key count to three. And get some money for our last shopping trip. This In this section we're going to very carefully jump into that dark area and then very carefully run at a very precise time and that's going to beat those cycles. It's also possible to skip and jump over this last guy but it's not as marathon safe oh, so man, I generally don't go for it. Nice. You know what's really funny? So as I mentioned earlier we Iraq now have three keys. We have the one from this area and we have the two from the first dungeon. In order to progress, we actually need to find three keys that are supposedly scattered throughout this area. Uh, one to unlock Risky Tops, one to unlock Sky, and one to unlock Roddy Tops. And between the four of us, we're able to open the giant door in order to exit this temple. Uh, but before we leave, we want to make sure to kill this Cackle Bat. We can't soak it up quite yet similar to like using the by uh, using the lamp like we would uh, really all the other ones because at this point in this particular armor set we actually don't have any of our equipment that includes the lamp uh, but yeah, so now that we've unlocked all three of the doors we're going to grab the rope and head out Blast is less useful. And now for a bit of hilarity, hilarity you see the giant statue of the princess that this poor, poor eyesighted man mistook you for. And as compensation, he gives you the golden pickaxe, oh, which is what we need in order to progress. Um, it's only for elder dragons. So, if you so making sure not to dragons, forget not gonna see it the cackle bet that we killed, we're going to head but, through these rooms. Uh, some of the effects are obvious, some of the effects are less And obvious. use the long range of the lamp in order to grab the dark magic. But each, each now the lamp doesn't have infinite range, which will thing. come into play later. Oh, you've killed them all. But it does have a very, very long range. Wasn't sure. Didn't want to reveal spoilers. So, so next up, we need to get the three cackle bats. Smaller. Well, sorry, uh, we got one cackle bat. Faster, and next, we need to hand in that golden uh, pickaxe. And by handing in the golden pickaxe to these miners, uh, where they are able to. Damage tear down this uh, giant wall, but since they're all cowards, they run from all the monsters. Uh, 
Bok just doesn't have as much miasma around them, so you can basically turn it completely uh, off. Next thing we need to do is and, uh, get the last three sure Cackle Bats for this area. So this area has a total of four. Uh, first one is hidden by that purple breakable item, which again, we shouldn't have the sword yet. But since we do, we're able to grab this right away. Uh, here we don't leave the area and re-enter it. Because like, if we leave up top, it actually only goes one way. Uh, and if we I exit to the right, it's actually fairly far away and not worth it. The, uh, Gigante gun lance. A little bit of shuffling here. And hardest parts of the fight are like the first and heading over minutes. to the next area now Both this one i think is particularly well hidden it's actually one of the few that i couldn't find in my casual play so you'll notice that really on the left and right there a lot of the quicksand areas had skulls and that's Some an interesting thing about this game where they denote any death pit with little skulls floating above it if you look very carefully the sand pit the quicksand pit that we slid into didn't have any skulls so that's the indicator that we were able to slide through it again this has a one-way exit so we just have to wait here some more risky shuffles and we head over to the right once again heading down in order yeah, to get one more Kieran spot Kieran isn't as weak to, uh, trying to shuffle to there but unfortunately it. i fall off the small platform and we get this cackle bat uh, here it's technically faster to damage boost through, but since I'm so low on health, I prefer to uh, Adora, set up another risky that, shuffle uh, and charge through the rats. Pretty well. They have a chance to I get some drops as well as health, so I don't think it's too bad. Uh, here we're yeah. killing this scorpion girl as a uh, hope to get another, another super game. pike ball or super and monster yeah, milk drop. Unfortunately, we only get another 10 monies. But now we head into the next dungeon, Lost I Catacombs. Sure was weak to dragon. Grabbing some more money there, and this is the item, or this is the area where you're supposed to get the sword. So we're starting a shuffle here in order to power uh, through all these blocks really quickly, really and then we head down but where this is the the area really that's supposed to be uh, blocked off by needing the sword. We're also able to use our cannon in order to get three hits in going down as opposed to just the one from the from the sword. Yeah, that's fine, doing a shuffle here that's in order to clear out these enemies like and doing another shuffle to get halfway and through that Nix's star. health and then quick cannon for the other three. This particular room like, can actually be pretty star, tough, but fine. once you realize the or patterns and how it. easy it is to kill you things with uh, cannon shots, three, it's ideally, pretty clean and straightforward. One and X is where you wanna... uh, here I'm setting up for a one cycle dash, but unfortunately I don't quite get the risky shuffle needed for it. So I decide to go for the backup and stop halfway. Next up, we start using some of these resources that we have, choosing to go with a normal monster milk and a super pike ball in order to fight the Squid Baron boss. So Squid Baron has a bunch of a variety of phases that he cycles through. Mostly when he's bouncing back and forth, we want to get him with a sword, and while he's standing still or jumping, we're going to want to keep within short distance yeah, so we maximize our hits with the super pike ball and then get into position very very quickly for me. with the uh, hair whips like the now he goes in the squid so form 2.0 where well, this is pretty easy we just need to use the sword in order to crack him open and now the next in the cycle is getting food so you want to make sure that you can start this phase with him eating the food so you're able to get in a lot of extra damage in one more Not back and forth, killing him with the sword, and that's it for Squid Baron. Certainly not sure where we're that can be a deck. very tough fight if you're uh, low on resources or don't have max resources. Resources in this case referring to Monster Milk, Super Monster Milk, Pike Balls, and Super Pike the, Balls. Uh, one cycle. 
And he gives us our next map. Pirate Flare out of here. Just double checking that I in fact had it selected. So there is that. And heading back to talk to Risky. So usually we would just immediately head to the level. But there's actually a fetch quest that we need to do first. Involving the fossil that we picked up very early. Yeah, it's entirely possible that so what we do is we talk to Bolo here and hand in the dragon fossil along with the x-ray specs. Um, and he uses the two of them together in order to get us the death mask. And that death mask is actually needed in order to progress through the next area. It's entirely possible I've just got confirmation bias. Usually in a casual playthrough, you need to go all the way through this fairly difficult level, find out that you need something, and then head all the way back. So it can be pretty crazy. But again, since we already know what's what, we just get what we need early on. The few times that I've been now this section is actually really tough. It can be summed up by don't jump too much. If you jump too much, you can usually get snagged on a corner up above. And that'll stop her momentum. And while you're dashing, it's very important that you're invincible. So you always want to be dashing through this section. If you're not dashing, you risk getting hit and then getting knocked around. Everything in here does quite a bit of damage. And with only two hearts, since we don't get any health upgrades in this playthrough, you want to be very, very careful with your life. Again, kill another Cackle Bat. And we don't go all the way to the right side of the screen because this is one of those instances of the yeah. lamp doesn't last quite far enough. Or sorry, reach far enough. Very smooth. Going with a another one final dash, handing in that death mask. Let's go. We're going to be starting off with a risky shuffle here. As well. There we go. And jumping over for another Cackle Bat. Now we want to make sure to be dashing here so that we can get that extra 15 damage from the dash. Once again, in and out. And grabbing the Dark Magic. Uh, here we're going to slide... Here we're going to slide against the wall. Making sure not to die to that Naga. And bouncing over to the right. Here's a very tight squeeze. Ooh, but unfortunately we get caught on the wall. Let's get the green coin. And here we need to get three things. A red coin, a blue coin, and a green coin. So that's the first coin that we need to get. And again, similar to Saliva Island, you're supposed to drop down through that hole as a sort of short sort of shortcut back. But since we have the cannon, we're able to just jump right up here. Uh, getting in another delayed dash here. In order to dash on the other side of the invisible wall. And another tight squeeze trying to maintain momentum. And we're able to pull it off this time. Killing the cackle bat very quickly. What's been happening in your hunt? Heading over to the next area. This is another one of those rooms with the randomly spawning ghosts. So you have to be very careful going through here. Uh, here's another case of only yeah, killing know, uh, the bare minimum with the over. dash. So we don't want to dash all the way through because that's actually straight. slowing down from hitting more things. Should have been fairly straightforward Running into the wall in order to get some extra money drops and getting the last red coin. With uh, an elder ceiling weapon. And now starts the final grinding session. Uh, fortunately, we're able to get uh, yeah. quite a bit of money from this spot right here, picking up, I believe, three pots yeah, that are nice. hidden uh, along this section. Uh, doing an unnecessary risky shuffle there, but we need to collect approximately 350 monies here. So it takes a, a little while, but it's not too bad. It's actually one of the more tense grinding sessions because you always have to worry about that one tiny ghost that's really close to the bottom. And sometimes I just have to bail. Because it's not worth, the extra gems is not worth taking the damage. Because these guys kill you in two hits. 
So you have to be very, very, very careful to avoid them. And there's a ton in these rooms. I think there's there's six of these ghosts here. Going for one last bit of money, being very careful to avoid all the ghosts. Getting a nice risky shuffle here. Oh yeah, Kieran's always sliding between the stone. And now we have to talk to these gamers. Like so now that we have all three coins, we can play a game with these three. Where it's either heads or tails. And since we just want to go through the text as fast as possible, we just mash through heads. And you might think, oh no, this is a spot where it can be locked out with bad RNG. Well, fortunately, you can only lose three times. And then you just always win. Once you win, you're able to hand the locket in to this suspiciously similar per person. And once you do that, you get the hopeful flame to use on this fireplace right here. And once you do that, <laughs> you're finally able to get the manly musk, which is used in order to open the next dungeon. Where uh, I got stunned by Ral, like I got my asmud and stunned by Ral Zarek. Doing a bit of a I risky shuffle here again to make sure we don't get hit by those reapers. Nothing I could do when I died. And heading on in. So this is the level where you're supposed to get the dash boots that we've been using this whole time. Um, there's a lot of uh, really long exchanges and really long rooms where you're they're intending to set up these super long dashes. But since we have the risky shuffle on our side, we're able to skip a significant portion of the game. Or a significant portion of this dungeon. It'll get a bunch of so here we're jumping over this gap, making sure to sword the hidden area. And, lazy. and what you're supposed Wait, to do is line up those three platforms tempered. in order to have enough running room in order to dash through Every for this final bit. But since we have the risky right. shuffle, we're able to just go through that. straight to the boss. Again, using a super pike ball and a super monster milk. Uh, we're choosing to use the super pike ball instead yeah, of the super monster milk for our one of two uh, super powered options like, perfect example. because the super monster milk is uh, almost I twice the cost a... of the super pike ball so it lowers our uh, all, all around right uh, shopping costs That's uh, here dragon's a main. pretty tough fight uh, he has a slightly really random position that he can up, end up in so you need so to be I very careful but once you hit him with a heavy Heavy attack in his head, he ends up going down to the and, ground. Uh, I just got ruined. And you can finish him off. Like, almost immediately. It can be very easy to, to lose track of this. If you take too much damage, yeah, especially really after you've uh, hit him a couple times, he can start moving very, very quickly, and it's easy to get the level out yeah, from under your control. And honestly, Tempered is not that bad. Um. Compared to Apex, like I, I actually really like Temper. Next up, it's basically the game map we received. Received, no sorry, is Frostbite up. Island, which I can totally appreciate. So this because island, once again, we can just is, head uh, straight to. Apex, which is just but this kind of starts a really long a chain. So we get this Lost Soul, it, uh, which is going to be very important later. But this whole arc so to speak, is going to involve a series of fetch quests that culminate into unlocking the final dungeon. And you may be wondering, why don't we just pirate flare? Well, you can't pirate flare immediately because it's technically inside, so we need to get to this screen right here, and we're able to pirate flare back to the ship. I.e. Devil Joe. Who knows what they could be patching in for DLC. Alright, so now there's three Cacklebats in this area, and we're going to be gra grabbing all three on this pass. Oh yeah, Apex is pretty dumb. Um, so this first one's fairly well so hidden. You, uh, you end up needing to dash into this wall to unlock the Cacklebat. Uh, for some reason, the range of your lamp is very short, and all of these angled paths force you to slide down if you step on them 
So if you're dashing, it's fine, but if you uh, touch them when you're not dashing, you end up sliding down and losing a lot of your momentum. Um, unfortunately, we didn't jump fast enough there. But here you find out Ammo Baron is trying to get the targeting module. And that's one of the three things that we have to collect. Techno Baron is asking us to get the targeting module from Bolo, of all people. And here we want to kill as many wolves and, and tombstones as possible long and short without it, losing our speed. You had to use a uh, this is going item. to increase our damage and set that up for a very quick kill on a Cacklebat coming that up. Allowed you to basically not bounce off so we're up to 23 damage and hopefully the Cacklebat bounces into our attacks. We're able to do the 20 plus damage twice. But unfortunately, he randomly, it's completely random. Uh, if he jumps so to the right, you're able to hit him multiple time times with your dash. If he jumps to the left, unfortunately, you only get one hit in, but you do do a significant amount of damage. Uh, trying to escape with a dash here, so we end up needing to go a little bit higher, and then we can jump up and over it. This timing some of these jumps, unfortunately. There we go. Honestly, World is a good monster hunter to start with. And now we just need to head up these chains to the next uh, sort of mid-island area. Like Which is Propeller Town. Said, so this area a point where I is when you're supposed you to have the dash. So a lot of these involve uh, uh, long dashes and long capes. But since we have the cannon, we're able to dash through these really long, elaborate rooms. Another delayed dash here in order to prevent it from stopping and to allow us to dash through this area. Again, a combination of cat, uh, hat, uh, cannon, and uh, dashing are key through for most of the puzzles here. And the first game in a generation one really long hat section here which is always uh i've always found this really fun to watch and really fun to to go through one of my favorite things about this game is just how quick the movement is while you're dashing and the game totally sets you up for it uh, here we use one cannon in order to get higher into the air gust immediately and then we need to make sure to save at least two to get around the left side at the end there later gen 5 game here we're very careful not to use any cannons until we've floated all the way up to get up to this platform. Usually you'd have to revisit for this section because the cannon is the last power up that you get. Since we have everything, as is tradition, we can just grab it right away. Kuliyaku makes up for it. Getting the last Cacklebat of this stage. Honestly, I really like Beetlejuice. He's a pretty crazy So quickly, monster. we grab the uh, targeting module that we've been has needing uh, from this area. And then heading like, back uh, to the ship. So like I said previously, uh, there's going to be a little bit of revisiting and a little bit of exploration uh, here. So usually you would need to revisit uh, no, most of the areas totally and go uh, through a bunch of things, but we've actually already found a lot of the things that we already need. But first we need to head through this hidden area to get this castle back. Now you might be wondering, why didn't we grab this earlier? Well, because at this point we have the attack upgrades. So we're able to have a slightly faster fight against this uh, castle back. Unfortunately here I was having trouble with exiting the room because the ex exit trigger is a little weird and it's easy to jump out of it. So I ended up accidentally waiting for the uh, Cacklebat yeah. to despawn. Four had Sarah Gius, I think. Not actually sure what the Grabbing the cart was. once again. I think it was Sarah Gius. Sarah Gius was just generally... And heading over to Roddy Tops. where we find out just what the lost soul is. Uh, the lost soul is the soul of Joe, Spirited Joe, 
who died from the sarcophagus very early on. And conveniently, we hand in the death mask in order in exchange for a pirate flare, which is fantastic because we actually just ran out of pirate flares. So it's just enough to tip us over trip. the edge. Next up, we actually need to hand in a bunch of the stuff that we've been collecting over the course of the game. But first, shopping trip. So we need a lot of things here. We need between the boss of the final level and the multiple phase of the final boss, we need four bubble shields, four super monster milks, four super pike balls, um, and three pirate players. Unfortunately, we don't have quite enough for the fourth bubble shield, but that's okay. That just means the uh, last boss will be a yeah, little really more risky. It's, really about the, uh, it's more important to have for me, it's the bubble shields the for the final boss than it is to have like, for uh, the uh, boss of the ice area, which is coming up. Solo play in Monster Hunter. Again, since we don't actually need any anything from all these enemies we're preventing the delay that the sword Especially the dash has from killing things and just ignore them the most fair so here we're it's handing in that enchanted like blade that we got very early on from uh, tanline island much better at it now, I because that two of ammo baron's members are trying to get branson here in order to transform to get out of range of unfortunately the, i use a bubble shield here on accident which is very, very bad. <laughs> I'm mad. So I'm, I thought I had the I pirate flare select, but I did not, which is why it's always important to check. Really dumb, and now we're actually getting the second to last cackle bat. Again, not having the, the range. So we don't want to go too far away. And then this is actually my favorite jump in the game. Uh, you need all of your resources in order to make it through this. All three cannon jumps, dash, hat, everything. And hidden back here is the final cackle bat. So now we have all 20 bits of dark magic. And with that, we are able to access the true final boss once we get there. Pirate flaring back to the center. And handing in our last couple fetch quests. Oh, uh, First up, we need to revive that Joe. Was, um, that was generations. So that Ammo Baron has his full crew again. Sune, I think? Something like that. But yeah, Generations had a bubble dragon. So that's one thing. Next up, we need to hand in the targeting module to Ammo Baron, also, to and now that dragon, all of his crew and the targeting module the, uh, is assembled, he is going to attempt to fire on the palace, but it's actually just going to end up unlocking the final stage for us. Yeah, the bubble dragon is probably the least aggressive monster. And as you might expect, we're that's heading that's back to the ship, heading back to Frostbite Island. Unfortunately, going the wrong direction. Man, I'm just super and then heading into the stage. Unfortunately, missed jumping a little bit here. So here we need a couple keys. Uh, the item from this stage is the cannon, which is the last one that we haven't collected yet. So we're <laughs> able to use the cannon in order to <laughs> sequence break once again, getting keys that we're not intended to collect yet. Specifically this key right here. See, I, I uh, you have to use all of your cannon jumps uh, it in order to get like all the way up here. Because that was in one of the trailers. Picking it up from the bottom in order to save some travel distance there. You should be there. okay with it not. Yeah, that's fair. Using the risky shuffle to break through these blocks. 
Uh, you're intended to use these treadmills in order to kind of risky shuffle in place. Or in order to charge in place, but since we have the risky shuffle, we have no need for them. Be very careful to avoid that falling ice block. And that's all we need to get out of here and fight the next boss. So this is Steel Mag. Uh, Steel Mag is another kind of RNG heavy boss. But it's sort of a roulette kind of RNG, where the sequence of the buttons on his back is completely random. Fortunately, I got very lucky here, guessing the sequence early, and almost getting a one cycle, but not quite attacking fast enough. Again, going for another sequence, getting very lucky that I hit it all first try, and then wrapping it up. Usually, if you would get it wrong, he'd do a sort of burst attack at you. And it really slows things down, but fortunately I was able to guess correctly for all of the attacks. Hey, let's go murder a giant pirate. And now that we've killed the boss of the final full level, we get the final map, which is the Lonely Grave map. Uh, heading over to the left a little bit, trying to get some nope, money. But end up pirate flaring out. Usually you wouldn't do this. Um, I actually routed this incorrectly. I should have I grabbed like one of the money pots in the area to get the last bubble shield that I need. I think I might risk it and do it with two. So we head over to the Lonely Grave. First phase and last phase. I also don't have the extra super pie call that I want to get. Crap. And this is going to be a massive plot reveal. Uh, this whole time we've been trying to find the Lonely Grave, trying to find the Grave of the Pirate Master. And Risky's plans don't exactly go all according to plan. Uh, this is the... F and she ends up getting kidnapped. This is the first time that the game hints at some sort of alternate ending or a need to get all the cackle bats and collect I all of the I'll dark magic. Fortunately for Risky, we've Let's been doing it just that. Unless I like immediately get three gold here. We're charging through the enemies okay. here. Uh, mostly because it'll end up being a uh, net uh, even in the long run. Uh, we unfortunately slid along that corner, which cancelled all of the momentum we were gaining. But the more things you hit, the less time you take per hit on the dash. So the intention being that you wouldn't end up slowing down too much while powering through all those small blocks. Yeah, we're probably gonna die here. Cool. Next up here, is a neat so trick called Palace Skip. So what we're going to be doing here is using a very, very precise sequence of hat and cannon firing in order to skip along all these areas, going from one door to the next. What you're supposed to be doing is going through these little side levels called the Pirate Trials, Pirate Master's Trials. But instead, we're actually able to skip all of it with very, very precise movements. That's it for the palace. So very, very quick. And here we go. Time for Pirate Master, the final boss. He has four, count them, four forms. Uh, this first form, you fight in every category. And it's very important. We're, we're down a bubble shield here. But it's very important to use the bubble shield on this boss because it's almost impossible to avoid his ranged attacks. As you can see right there. He starts using them quite a bit. Now here we're going to try to attack here and for uh, usually for a quick kill in any percent we would actually take damage from them and uh, stay right next to them. But for the extra safety we want to be very careful not to die. 
Usually the game would end here for any with any okay, percent, but since we have all dark magic, what, what happens is Pirate Master actually steals about. all of our abilities. It's not copied about. or anything. We are absolutely unable to use any of those items that we've been using throughout the entire game at this point in pirate mode. So no double jumps, no nothing. All just base abilities. So this is phase two. Phase two and phase three are very similar. Uh, this one you just have to go all the way to the right, wait for the first ball to bounce twice and just run to the right. Uh, here you just need to find the open spot between all of the swords. Middle stage I'm gonna have to do without, without and bombing. here you just need to dodge the shots which you would ideally be using a bubble shield here but since I'm down one bubble shield I'm choosing to not use it here because that's the easier phase to skip a bubble shield on unfortunately getting tagged by one of the shots because almost everything instantly kills you here but fortunately, we start with one auto-revive potion at the very beginning. Uh, here, you notice that we're jumping a lot. Um, when you land, it actually cancels your attack animation. So if you attack, jump, land, attack, and go with that kind of sequence, you're actually able to attack a little bit faster because you keep canceling your animations upon landing. It's possible to do this in one phase, each of these in one phase, but I'm a little slow here. And fortunately, the Super Monster Milk and Super Pike Ball last long enough for two, uh, two phases, or two cycles, I should say. And now that we've cleared through this guy, it's on to phase three. First up, a little bit of plot. So the Pirate Master forces you to give him the Dark Magic, which you've turned into White Magic over this whole time, over the course of the entire hey, game, have, uh, which gives Shantae a massive power boost. But unfortunately, this power boost is in flavor only. Uh, you'll notice that Shantae does 999 damage. Uh, that's not actually true. That's just fluff. Uh, the third and fourth phase of the Pirate Master both have a thousand health. The 999 damage is actually just for visual effect. Jante is actually only doing uh, six damage without any upgrades, and 16 with the monster milk. So here again we have to dodge these shots and avoid the guns getting hurled at you, but if you just sit in the lower left hand corner, you're able to avoid them basically for free. <laughs> Making our way up the spines again. Going for these attacks. As you can see, trying to land to cancel the attacks. Getting many more hits in when it's closer to the ceiling. But not quite making it in one cycle. Next verse, same as the first. Uh, I always found this section to be to be very stressful. It's just waiting with the swords quickly moving back and forth, watching for an opening. Since we already have the bubble shield here, once again, usually you'd want to use the bubble shield as late as possible to kind of make it last into the second phase if you think you're going to have a second phase. But since we already have the bubble shield up, we just chill in the corner. Alright, now for the final oh, and my personal least favorite phase. Uh, Risky is actually going to be firing a cannonball at you, which is intended for the Pirate Master. So what you need to do is you need to stun lock the Pirate Master with a Super Pike Ball or a Pike Ball and rapidly attacking while also mashing the cannonball as fast as possible to get the cannon shots into his face as quickly as you can while keeping him locked in place. Got him. And that's it. That's the final phase of the Pirate Master. It counts. With a one, one hour, nine minutes, and six seconds. Um, this is only a recent PV. Uh, I picked this category up for a potential race with JT at uh, SGDQ if it gets accepted as a race. 
Um, but I expect that a uh, sub 110 will be basically free and much more consistent uh, by the time SGDQ rolls around and probably within the next couple of weeks because I've only been doing this category for a short amount of time. But it's a fun category, so I'm looking forward to doing it a lot more. So thanks for watching, and that has been Shantae it's and the, the Pirate's like Curse, that I was for. all dark magic, pirate mode, no out of bounds. My PB, I guess, had a really good dagger on a really good Squid Baron.